So this is generally a bad thing. It's something you really don't want to see under the hood of your car. It hurts your performance um, and just your overall drivability of the vehicle suffers when you have stuff like this going on. So the main things and the main symptoms, if you can't feel it through the throttle, you're not super in tune with your engine maybe, maybe you have an automatic transmission so it's harder to feel, uh, you just seem a little maybe down in power after the engine warms up where, you know, a telltale signs the engine pulls really hard when cold and it feels like you lose 50 horsepower once it warms up. And another thing is when you shut your vehicle off, then it'll heat soak and when you go to start it, it won't start, won't start, you have to hold your foot to the floor to start it and that's because your fuel in the line is vaporizing and also what can happen is it can get so hot that when fuel gets hot it's real volatile it expands at a really rapid rate so it'll be going into your bowl it'll overfill your carburetor and you have a rich condition and again got to hold your foot to the floor to let some of the air in so that it'll fire up so anyway we see here we got some nice percolation going on where uh, it's vaporizing in our line and some things I want to point out here to avoid this just right off the bat is when you have these fuel lines, a lot of factory fuel lines will follow the contours of the engine. They're extremely hot and I'll get an IR gun on that in a second and we'll see the actual temp. But anyway, you can see the issues there. We're boiling off our fuel and guaranteed if I went to start this vehicle, I'd have to hold it to the floor. So um, we're going to come up with a little home remedy that I came up with on uh, my way to Virginia a few years back in my 65 Galaxy. Keep in mind from Iowa to Virginia, that's about 1400 miles to where I was going. So, uh, you know, your fuel and carburation acting properly was very important for me. So anyway, without further ado, I flapped my jaw long enough. You see the problem here? I'm gonna get this thing slapped in here, explain what I did, why I did it again, and, um, should be good to go. That's definitely bad news. No matter how you look at it. So you always want to make sure that you're avoiding situations like this because it'll stop you, just stop you dead. So again, I just want to reiterate the issues that you'll experience if you're having uh, problems like this under your hood. The, uh, the main one being, and the most noticeable, is when you go to fire up your car after it's sat and you've drove it. Uh, like say you go into a restaurant and then you come back out and it heat soaks and then it won't start and you have to put your foot to the floor to fire it off. That's one of the main symptoms of your fuel overheating. Another one is that after your car warms up, uh, your performance will go uh, down quite a bit. It seems like you kind of lose 50 horsepower or so once you're up to operating temperature. And uh, again, that's uh, your fuel getting too hot and it's messing with the air fuel ratio and you're not getting the proper tune on your engine. And then uh, finally, your engine RPM, it will also dip. So say when it first warms up, it's idling at 1,000. Then after you drive it a little bit, you know, it'll be idling at 800 or it'll develop kind of a rougher idle. And again, that's because your fuel is getting hot, it's getting less dense, and it's leaning out. So uh, anyway, those are some of the main symptoms you'll experience when you have problems like this. So now that I have this in here, it seems like the car runs real good after it sits and heat soaks and I come back and it'll fire right up without having put my foot to the floor or anything. Also, it, uh, you know, if I sit in traffic for a long time, it won't, you know, drop any idle RPM or start running rough because that fuel is staying just as dense as how I tuned it. So obviously when we tune our carburetors, we have our hood open. So that that heat is allowed to escape, but when you shut your hood, it's a whole different ball game and you can't really tune your carburetor with, with your hood shut. So if you can keep that fuel the same temp and keep it the same density, then your air fuel ratios will all stay the same and you'll hold your tune, um, open or closed hood. And that's what we have here. Now, a better system than this is obviously the return line. And I never documented this when I did this to my Galaxy on the way to Virginia. But once I did get to Virginia, I switched and I did run a return line right off my carburetor. And what's nice about these 84 Mustangs, uh, the mechanical fuel pump has a return line on it. So that accounts for all the fuel going back to the gas tank. But anything up here on the top of the engine still gets hot and has heat soak issues. And this kind of 
is a band-aid to alleviate that again unless you run your return line off the back of your carburetor all right so we got our ir gun here and we're going to take a look at our line um, from our fuel pump that previously was getting really hot and we'll take a look at our fuel uh our fuel line afterward so coming right off our metal line and the car has been sitting here for a little bit but it's about 150 ish and cooling down take a look inside of here shooting the side of our fuel line that's in there we're coming in at about no 87 degrees and then checking our fuel line coming out it's been sitting in heat soaking for a while but it's only at like 105 so you're dropping your fuel a whole uh you know 30 40 50 degrees and that makes a big difference in how dense your fuel is and of course how much fuel you get into your cylinder every stroke of your piston so um, that's good stuff right there so anyway i guess that's a wrap um, i hope you learned something about your uh, engine heat and how it relates to your carburation and why you want to do your best to uh minimize that and obviously i got a big old hole cut in the top of my hood which really helps with keeping my air density the same and now with keeping my fuel density the same when the engine heats up you get in different conditions i'm keeping my same tune on the engine which is really nice and again this heat stuff is your biggest enemy if you can um you know grasp the concept of what this heat is doing you know making it your fuel less dense it messes with your air fuel ratios obviously with your fuel less dense your same amount of air that's a leaner mixture and you see you're getting away from your base tune that you had on your carburetor causing issues so if you can understand these factors then you can uh, set your carburetor up and drive your junk like this every day if you want to which i currently do And my final note here, I'm sure you've noticed my American flag air cleaner. Since I started making this video, uh, you know, we had two police officers killed in the line of duty here in central Iowa, and it's just a horrific thing. So I always support law enforcement. They're out there uh, risking their lives every day to keep people like me safe so I can do dumb stuff like this all the time. So uh, always keep your law enforcement and your thoughts and prayers um, a lady sent me this. She sends me a lot of stuff from time to time. I guess she, uh, her website's Painted Bull Creations or Painted Bull. Anyway, I'll post a link, but she does a lot of stuff with old automotive parts and art. So I had this hanging on the wall and I thought I'd just go ahead and slap it on the engine. But, uh, anyway, that's it and hope you guys, uh, took something positive away from this, uh, video.